Why, you're probably asking, do I need a new 4x6 horizontal vertical metal cutting bandsaw? Because something broke that, as you can well imagine, they don't make spare parts for. And this is the culprit. The upper blade guide. Having served well for 17 years, 16 years, whatever, one would have expected the bearings to wear out. Instead, something fell on it, and this, let's be generous and say aluminum casting, finally cracked. And this is the story of how I finally broke down and replaced an entire bandsaw because of one stupid cracked casting. Okay, I don't normally do unboxing videos, but this, as wonderful as it is, can go right in a fucking bucket, along with the green stand from the old green bandsaw. We'll get to that in a minute. The rest of this, if I can cut through that, that smell of, of uncured paint and despair, hopefully everything I need is in this box and I'm not gonna have to undergo the typical Harbor Freight shuffle going back to the store two or three times to get a hold of everything. We'll see how it goes. Beautiful. I don't even know where to put this. Here. Wheels we don't need. Well, we can use those for something else later. Depth stop handle we don't need. This we probably will because I know that is the stand for the extended table. Corner. This looks like stand crap that we don't need. Feet. Whatever. Mmm, bucket of well-labeled hardware. And here we are. Well, nothing major seems cracked. No, uh, no big cracks in the casting, no handles broken off, no broken knobs, no bent table. Overall, could be worse. I think we'll keep that. My stand could use a chip tray. Oh look! Ah, I thought that was a leaf. How the f are we gonna get this out of here? There we go. Beautiful. Lovely. Excellent. All right, not the heaviest thing in the world. So let's see if we can wrench our back. Axle. You know, I'm not putting it on this stand, but actually I could probably use that for a project. Who knew I was going to buy $100 worth of bandsaw and $49 worth of spare parts for other projects? I like it. I like it. Mmm. Oily paper. Oh yeah, that's good and fun. Let's set it down right here. And hey, I don't need to go get my back fixed. It's a win for everyone. Okay, for those of you who haven't seen them side by side, here are two generations of this 4x6 bandsaw. You can take a little bit of a look, I think, the most interesting part of this whole thing, is what happened as tool production moved from Taiwan to mainland China, right? First thing I notice off the bat is back when the green one was made, which is the older one, right? So green is older, red is newer. Green is made in Taiwan, red is made in China. It seemed like the Taiwanese were proud of what they were building. 
it came with that sticker. It actually looked like a real tool, right? Model number, motor specifications, 14 amps, <clears throat> sure. Um, maybe in a dead short. But manufacturing date, serial number, as if they anticipated this being something that people would use and want to keep track of, like an actual asset, like a tool in an actual tool shop. And right there in the bottom right, you can see made in Taiwan. The casting quality, I mean, maybe it's not the best I've ever seen in my life, but you know, the edges, take a look at, at maybe a few of these inside edges right here. They're rough, but they're not horrific. The rounded corners, right? Decent. A nice warning label on the metal plate. You know, they went, went out all out for script. And honest to God, it's not even chinglish, right? Wear eye protection. Do not remove jam cutoff pieces until blade has stopped. That's a complete English sentence, right? Now, please fully assemble tension spring assembly. Huh, well, maybe. But at least here, right? The company that contracted this probably wrote it and they reproduced it the way it was supposed to be reproduced. Now, if you take a hop, skip, and a jump for over 10 years, 15 years later, you'd think maybe the Chinese would have caught up to Taiwanese quality in that time. But what's really happened is people are demanding cheaper and cheaper shit, right? There's no label on this thing. There's nothing on the red one that even indicates what it is, right? It doesn't say produced for Harbor Freight, Camarillo, California, right? It doesn't have a central machinery brand on it. It's just a cheap red casting. Little bit of a note about which direction the blade goes. Little bit of a warning about locking the arm, right? The casting, I don't know. This, this to me doesn't seem like it's quite the same. Might actually be, maybe it's stronger because it comes in and meets... This is the, uh, the gearbox full of gear oil. You know, maybe up here the casting was separate from that. I don't know, stronger or not. But it basically follows the same pattern, but it just seems a little bit... You know, this is old and worn, but if I cut through the muck and grease and the filth and grime, and you take a closer look at this, right? That was a reasonably flatly machined plate. Remember, this thing has been in my shop getting abused for 16 years. You take a look at the corresponding one over here. Hear that? You can still see the machining marks in that thing. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not expecting to cut within a thousandth of an inch when I buy this thing. But, you know, come on. The fit and finish certainly shows the difference. Because I paid 16 years ago. I paid about $199 for that green bandsaw. And I'll do the calculation and put it up in a box. But that was decent money back then. I bought this red one today on sale for 149 bucks. That is in the, in, in the same dollars, in 2005 dollars, that is substantially cheaper due to inflation. It does look like there maybe have been a couple of, of changes and additions. There's an extra bolt here in this casting piece that, that holds the blade in place and allows you to make adjustments to the blade. Only one screw plus the adjusting screw up here, right? This thing's stuck out. Yeah, I've hit myself and caught shit on it all the time. It looks like now at least it's, a, it's an Allen screw embedded. The, the vise looks roughly the same, although I'll tell you, I may be swapping over the old vise here because to me, these thicker castings look a little more robust. See if you can get it from that side. These thicker castings over here look a little more robust to me than this one over here than these thinner, lighter weight ones on the newer machine, that's for sure. The one thing that has changed and the entire reason we're here today is this, the blade guide. And I think it's mostly changed for the better. It still looks like, right, this is a cheap casting. Let's take a quick trip to the toolbox. Give ourselves a little magnet. Thanks, Matco Tools. Right, it still 
It's not ferrous. It's still pot metal. Let's be generous. It's still aluminum. Um, and it's still minorly adjustable, but I'm going to bet that the internal adjustment with better support here probably stands up better over time than the one on my old saw, which I'll show you in a minute. But much more importantly, both the upper and the lower are adjustable, right? Using these bolts, this bolt here, this bolt here, these things can be adjusted to get the blade tracking just right. In addition to the adjustments that I'm confident are still on the bearings. The bearings themselves, at least in the old one, were on eccentric screws. So you could move the bearings in and out within a, a modest range of adjustment. And same for the ones, the saw guide bearings, right? The other piece that's different here is the way the saw guide bearings are held. So if you look on the old one, right, they're just hanging out in space, man. There's one little screw on a little casting nub back there, right? It's a little casting nub back here that these things sit on. So then there's, this, there's just that one little thing holding this bearing out in space. On this new one, right, it's quite clear that the bearing is, is, is captured much better, supported on both sides, probably much stiffer does a much better job of holding the blade in place, at least with the pressure that the, you know, heavy duty cuts are putting against it. So with any luck, that will help prevent the problem that I had that brought us all here today. And that is, in addition to this thing breaking, in addition to this thing just being a piece of crap that sits here on the outside of the saw, this is not the knob that came with it, the master car special. Jesus Christ, at least they put a six foot screw on this thing. The problem we had was that this piece is bowed. It is bowed upwards. And I'll show you that with a straight edge in a second. My sincere hope, and the whole reason I bought a new one today is that by being a little bit stronger in the way this blade guide is made, I might have a chance of this thing actually surviving more than the, the 15 years that my old one did before that casting just gives up, bends, and gets so crooked it doesn't cut straight anymore. One other thing I've noticed that's changed between China and Taiwan, the motors have gotten less powerful. Hopefully you can see that. Most importantly, the 6.5 amp rating at 1700 RPM on the bottom. The old motor, whether it was true or not, is absolutely debatable, but it was a 10 amp motor running at 17, 1720, at 1700. So the motor has gotten considerably less powerful over time, plus or minus the 50% fudge factor in all the ratings they get. Inside, uh, Chairman Mao's factory over here. Holy sh! It looked like they broached this thing with a 50-year-old pocket knife. I mean, I didn't do this, and it's not just from shipping. Probably hard to see in the light. There are scratches all over here. That keyway, I probably should have filed it out before I put the pulleys on, right? A little lubrication or not. These things did not go on easily, and God only knows where this belt came from. Right, it's a 2007. Let's let's hope that's that model number and not the year it was made. So let's talk quickly about the stand. Um, as I mentioned, I'm not going to use the red stand that came with it. About a couple of years ago, the green stand for my original one started really just bending. And look, a lot of people complain about these things, right? They're sheet metal, folded sheet metal. They're not very sturdy. 15 years was probably more than I was supposed to get out of it. So over the summer, I welded up this stand for my green saw. And because I'm lazy, uh, I haven't gotten around to painting it yet, which I'm going to count as a feature since my saw is now red. But beyond that, the one thing I can tell you that is absolutely different, and thankfully I kind of accounted for it when I built this stand, is the distance between the mounting holes. So as you can kind of see on this, right, the saw is mounted uh, on these four tabs, or actually it sits on the frame. It sits on the outer edge of this frame, but there are four bolts that hold it against these tabs 
to keep the thing anchored down. Um, the distance between those tabs, the distance between the front tab and the rear tab, the distance between the holes is different from the new saw to the old saw. So, on the original green bandsaw table, as evidenced by this, right? If I line that up, we end up with about 19 inches. Right about 19, maybe 19 and a, and a 16th hole to hole. On the new saw, if I line this up with that hole over there, and I come over here, we are at 16 and a half. I get to cut and re-weld and move inboard these tabs on my frame here before this whole thing starts to work again. So, me. When do you want to bet the distance between these things is different too? 